Hello, it's Scott Manley here. This map by the Center for Near-Earth Object Studies at JPL shows the location of every large fireball. That is, every large meteor that came into the Earth's atmosphere and exploded in the upper atmosphere. These chunks of rock come in at hyperbolic speeds, and when they burn up in the atmosphere, they release a lot of energy. If you look at the scale on the side, that gives you the impact energy in log kilotons. So the lowest ones there are about 100 tons of TNT, while the largest ones are measured in yields of hundreds of kilotons of TNT equivalent. So the Hiroshima bomb was about, you know, 18 to 20 kilotons. The Chelyabinsk event, which is the big red one over central Russia, that was about 440 kilotons, but just over Christmas we had a new one to add to this list, and it's over the Bering Sea, and it has uh, an energy of about 173 kilotons, and the thing is, practically no one on Earth noticed this. Which isn't really that unexpected, given that there aren't that many people driving around the Bering Sea with dash cams. But there are sensors all over the world looking for these big blasts because they look a lot like nuclear blasts. They have the same kind of energy. And there are many people that want to know if someone is testing nuclear weapons. So these things naturally get picked up by this same network. But the nature of this network also means that we don't really get the results from it very quickly. So the data was only published last week. The good news is that in these days of near limitless storage capabilities, the internet has a long memory, and we can look at the Himawari satellite, which is a weather satellite in geostationary orbit that covers the area in question. And if we take the exact time of the event and we zoom in towards the top right, we actually get to see evidence of this event. In fact, I would argue we might see the heated fireball trail. To be clear, I'm, I'm not saying that the trail was red at the time this image was taken, but this is what the uh, color compositing has decided the color should be. Himawari takes 16 different color bands simultaneously and, uh, you know, tries to mix them into something that is sensible to the human eye. It also takes images every 10 minutes, so we can actually make videos of this event. Now, the sun is actually quite low in the horizon here, but you can see the shadow that this plume is making over the clouds. And it, of course, is moving off and getting, I don't know, disturbed by the winds. And, of course, the shadow is moving because of the, the sun that's setting. Also, that flash of orange in the top right early on, that's the moon, which just happens to flash through the frame at that, this point. The reason the moon is uh, split like that is because the Earth image is captured in several strips. And normally, of course, the spacecraft is in geostationary orbit, so the Earth doesn't move much, and the clouds are only moving at, you know, tens of miles per hour over the Earth. But the moon is moving much more rapidly, and the time that it takes to do each scan is enough to have the moon move between subsequent passes. I did do another video on how Himawari's camera works, and it's amazing. It captures 16 bands of color at up to half a kilometer resolution. This is about one kilometer resolution you're seeing here. So this is amazing to see this happening. And of course, the images are still there for you to download. This object was probably about 10 meters across, massing maybe 250 tons. It came down at a velocity of about 32 kilometers per second, more or less out of the pole of the Earth. That's the direction it came from. And yeah, that gave it an impact, or sorry, uh, an emitted radiative energy of something about 173 kilotons, which is, of course, about, you know, about 10 times the size of any nuclear weapon that's ever been used in war. And while there were a number of teams around the world who got some clues that this happened, the full picture took a few days to build up because you have to combine data from multiple sensors. And there's one other public image that was found, and this is from the Terra satellite from its MODIS instrument. The satellite is in a sun-synchronous orbit, which means that it can't see, it's very low down, it can't see all of the Earth. So we are very lucky that it just happened to pass over the region just after the event. So this is looking straight down, and the plume is there on the bottom, but obviously you can see that long shadow being cast by the, the height of the plume. 
The fact that the shadow is so straight shows that the satellite must have passed over very soon after the event because what happens is the different wind speeds at different altitudes will typically twist the plume into knots and you'll end up not seeing this kind of long straight shadow. I'm sure actually you could figure out how high that plume is and what the altitude of the base is just by looking at the shadow and of course looking at the uh, knowing the local illumination conditions. This is also the Terra satellite from the same pass, but different color bands being used. And so yeah, you know, the Earth sustained a 170 kiloton blast, and nobody noticed because it was in the middle of the sea. You know, three quarters of the Earth's surface is covered in the ocean. Most of these airbursts are invisible, they are not seen by anyone, but they do happen regularly. It's also interesting to compare this one to Chelyabinsk because Chelyabinsk came in at a very low angle and most of the energy was directed sideways and didn't you know, hit any populated areas. Whereas this one came down at a much steeper angle so the shock waves would have hit the ground with you know, a bit more force possibly. And the other side of this is that most of these objects are so small that they were not discovered until they hit the earth. The Earth is a big enough place that most of the population don't see nuclear-scale blasts in its atmosphere, but space is even bigger and we don't see these tiny things that are the size of trucks flying past us at 30 kilometers per second. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.